Hello, everyone, and welcome to the spring edition of the Chamber Orchestra of Philadelphia's Musical Jewel Box. I am Josh Hartman, Director of Marketing and Communications, here again with you and starting off the spring session of interviews with the wonderful, lovely, and charming Michelle Johnson, who is our soprano soloist for our upcoming Beethoven a Perfido and Eroica Symphony concert. And so we're going to give a nice warm welcome to Michelle, after she just gave us that ravishing Strauss piece. So hello, Michelle, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Josh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited and glad to be here joining you to speak with you a little bit. Yeah, we're, we are, I haven't listened to Strauss in a while. And so it was a really good way to get my day, get my day started here as uh, and, I yo. continue to drink my, I guess it'll be Sunday afternoon at this point. <laughs> Sunday afternoon latte. <laughs> Strauss. Strauss will get you every single time. There is something so special about Strauss and his compositions that just touch the soul and um, and just feeds it. So I'm so happy to be able to share that with the audience and, and, and you. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little about yourself since uh, we haven't, I think it's been a while since we've had a singer as a guest soloist with the chamber orchestra. Um, and you know, somehow, I don't know how the office staff managed this, but the office staff is made almost entirely of singers running this orchestra. <laughs> we, some of us have other degrees too, composition, conducting, administration, right. and yet somehow all of our undergrads are like in singing. Um, so we're very excited for that. And so tell us a little about where is, uh, where's your background in singing come from? I mean, you've got this wonderful opera career. Where did it all begin? Take us back. I, I think, um, especially for myself, I grew up in Houston, Texas, and I started off in the band world, actually. Uh, I played bass clarinet and uh, different clarinets. I know, woo woo, right? Uh, played bass clarinet first, and then uh, got into singing a little bit later on, seriously, I guess. Maybe I didn't really get serious until like my senior year of high school. And it took me a while. I did sing in church, um, not classically. Um, I did a lot of gospel music and I was really heavy into theater as well. So I did some musical theater, but I think I just kind of followed my voice and from my mentors when I was younger, my voice teacher in high school was like, man, yo, I think this is it. This is it. And you just, I, it just fit. And so, you know, if it's not broken, you know, don't, don't try to, Mm -hmm. fit a, a, a square into a circle, as they say, or a circle into a square, whatever they say, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So uh, singing has sort of been very special in my life. Um, my dad, he was a fantastic singer. He has, he had such a great, um, beautifully tenor voice that wasn't trained, but mm -hmm. the things that he was capable of doing was just incredible and i also have an aunt so my i guess my musical side just i i guess i should say that my musical side came from my father's side and we have a lot of um instrumentalist on my dad's side professional instrumentalist at that and so i think the love of music really came from that side and my dad's sister has um, a very operatic voice as well, untrained. And so it was in the DNA, as they say, and I just followed my little breadcrumbs and here I am. I love this career. Yeah, and, and your career brought you to Philadelphia too, because you're, a, you're an alumni of uh, alumnus. Uh, I love, yeah, I love, I love an alumni <laughs> of, of AVA, right? Yes, I went to the Academy of Vocal Arts in uh, 2000. I think I moved to Philly and. 2008. Yeah, 2008. And uh, I've been here pretty much ever since. We left for a couple of years. Um, my husband got his uh, doctorate degree from Michigan State University. So we were living in Michigan for a couple of years, but now we're back. Woohoo! Happy to be back. Um, ABA has such a special uh, place in my heart. And I think that's where I really, really learned who I was as an artist and had the room and the tools to um, experiment and see exactly where I fit in as far as where I wanted my career to, to go. I'm very heavy in the operatic um, realm, but I absolutely, absolutely adore symphonic works and also a lot of oratorio and things like that. So when I received the phone call from the chamber orchestra, I was ugh, 
so ready. I was so excited. And ready to have that whole that whole string and woodwind section behind you again. Definitely blowing my ear. Come on, let's go. Let's do it together and soar. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, we've got another musical selection, um, which you know is something that the chamber orchestra is not all very likely to be able to put into our repertoire. But hey, you never know what kind of grants are out there or how many how many billionaires want to see a very special concert in their living room. Very true. Let's let's make this Shout happen. Out to the billionaires Speak it. Hi, billionaires. Hi. What's up? <laughs> um, so, so we're going to have a little bit of Verity. Can you set up this set up this aria for us? Sure. This next aria is, or I should say, this aria uh, is "Pace Pace," which means peace, peace. Um, we have it's from Verdi's "La Forza del Destino," which is the fate of destiny, and we see Leonora. Leonora has fallen in love with, of course, the wrong guy. And she has gotten herself into some trouble and she escapes to a monastery where she is in disguise and no one knows where she is. She thinks the love of her life is um, dead, um, but she is pleading and asking for um, for help and kind of uh, forgiveness and vengeance from her God. And then at the end, she hears footsteps and she's so terrified because she's been by herself for so long and she cannot believe that somebody is um, coming to these sacred grounds. And so at the end, she becomes very, very agitated and she curses whoever dares to come in her a uh, little uh, cave of solitude. So here we have Leonora um, singing her guts out. <laughs>
Excellent. I certainly, like many people, have uh, been cursing those who would dare enter my cave, and I can feel like I'm right there. I'm right there with you for all the men who've wronged me. Uh, <laughs> That's right. How so dare Verdi, you? <laughs> Verdi is so fun. What is that? What is it about Verdi that you do a lot? Do you do do you? So what is it about Verdi that draws you to him? Do you do a lot of Verdi in your in your career? I do. I do a lot of Verdi. I think um, for my instrument, Verdi has such a, um, a rhythmic feel to it that is so strong and it just fits my voice so well. And I love the characters that Verdi, all of Verdi's sopranos are so strong and they also are very human-like. You see so many layers within their character. Um, the music is is so exposed at times where you really have to be on top of like technically on top of it, but at the same time, it's just so exposed yet. Um, then he adds that extra like um, force with the, the, the brass and also the, the low strings and you kind of always have like that boom boom, 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 kind of like a heartbeat in, in Verdi's music that really speaks to me. And so I, I, I um, yeah, it just, it, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. It's a very, he's a very, very, very powerful um, composer that I uh, hold true to my heart. Very, um, I think Mozart and Verdi specifically uh, work very well for, I guess, my type of soprano, which is like a fuller lyric, almost going into spinto, which is like a, um, a heavier, um, you get the thrust, the voice. And so, yeah, uh, those big, huge lines and the lushness that, that happens with uh, Verdi's work is just incredible. Excellent. And now, are there any roles that you haven't gotten to play yet, either of Verdi or Mozart, that you are dying to take a take a crack at? Uh, I think one of the Verdi roles that I am definitely looking forward to is uh, I've never done Umbalo and Mascara. And it's one of those roles that I think you just have to keep 
working on to the, the stamina that's needed is incredible. I've, I've been able to do quite a few of Verdi's roles. So now I'm going more towards Verismo opera, which I love. I love Verismo opera, which is like that realistic, like really gutsy uh, type of opera. And uh, Puccini, I've never done a Tosca and I, I'm dying to do a Tosca. And mm. yeah, um, as far as like symphonic works, I've never done like Knoxville 1915 or whatever it's called. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that came up in a planning meeting recently. We'll jot that one down, Michelle. I know. Uh, you know what, Charlie? Charlie does some Barbara. I love Barbara. Um, so they, things, uh, there's always tons of music that's out there. That's why we need those billionaires to kind of throw us some money so we can have the resources that we need to do some research and find some um, some works that um, need to be showcased. But we just don't have the, the, the time or the funds to... to do the research to find them. So then um, I guess that can bring us into, you know, the fall as, as we hope for um, when you finally get to fulfill your concert with us that was meant to be in May. We will get to hear Beethoven's A Perfido. Um, so I was unfamiliar with this work um, before I saw it come through on our planning sheets. And I'm very excited because you don't get a lot of Beethoven vocal music. You don't. You don't get a lot of Beethoven vocal music, but this one is especially um, unknown. Well, not as known as, let's say, what Beethoven nine. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So, um, but let me tell you, this piece is huge. It this piece is huge. It's a huge concert aria, um, and it is very unlike. Um, I mean. Beethoven, just because number one, the language, the language is in Italian. It's not in his um, in his native tongue of German, um, and it is very, very Mozartian. It is it's so Mozartian the way it's laid out, but um, but it is layered so well. Uh, it is unique, crazy stamina, and I am so excited. I've been stalking this piece since undergrad, <laughs> stalking a perfido since undergrad. So to get this phone call, it's sort of, it's one of those bucket list things. Excellent. Well, we, we're so excited to have that. And I think uh, as the plan is now, we're going to get to listen to uh, our composer in residence, do uh, a brand new premiere. We're gonna listen to you bring the house down, blast the roof off for uh, for 16 minutes. And then we're gonna slam right into those E flat chords of uh, the Eroica Symphony. And it's gonna <laughs> this be, is gonna be incredible. It's gonna be, it's gonna be quite a time. We're all gonna be vaccinated. <laughs> just, I, fingers crossed. Let's 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 make it happen. But it's like ten months away, so we've got we've got time. We have time. Um, so that's really that's really exciting. We can't wait for that. And so I guess we'll come into the last section of our interview here, which is sad because I'm having such a lovely time. But mm -hmm. um, so we have one more performance that we're going to to close it off with uh, by the American composer Harry Burley. And would you give us some background on him? Sure. Um, Harry Burley, H.T. Burley is uh, very, very well known. He is a black, he was a black composer. Um, he moved to New York, was working as a custodian at the New York Conservatory of Music. And he was very interested in um, in composing. And he was also a fantastic singer. He was a baritone. And he was, as I said, he worked his way through a conservatory um, as a custodian, but he was also um, very, very good friends and with his mentor Dvorak, the composer Dvorak. And so he um, was able to study with him. And during his studies, he came across Lawrence Hope, who is a British, actually a British woman um, poet who went by an alias and of Lawrence Hope. He came by these uh, poems and he set five of her poems uh, to music. And this first one is called Worthwhile. And since it is February, we're talking about love and also Black History Month is also in February. Uh, we're gonna combine the two. And we have H.T. Burley's Worthwhile, which is um, a love song of 
you know, it might not have been the wisest choice to choose our love because of all of the hectic, hecticness of our love, but um, you can't fight it if, if the passion is there. So this is worthwhile. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Michelle. And we can't wait to see you next time we're here. And we can't wait to see everyone else when we can be together again. And now let's enjoy worthwhile.